They say a picture says a thousand words. What I can say about Industry 4.0 is that the picture is not yet complete. While we are still busy crafting the puzzles of the picture of Industry 4.0, I would like to come and enlighten you about this industry so that you can have an imaginative picture of how will it be like as it gets loaded into our lives. As they are busy crafting those puzzles, I will also run through you three puzzles today as part of me enhancing your imagination. I will highlight to you where it all started. It can start from four. There is an origin. Then I will tell you, zooming into Industry 4.0, what are its enablers and what is it that we can enhance in our lives. And that is when we look into the realities that we bring into our lives. Where it all started, in the 1700s, that is why it started by you started to having mechanical systems in your production lines, which were powered by other means of energy other than electric energy. Because electric energy was part of the industry 2.0, where also within that there was an introduction of mass production to minimize costs and to speed, to speed up the production processes. As technology advancements and innovation continue to change and impact on our lives, Industry 3.0 was also inevitable with advancements in electronics and information technology, IT. That really enabled us to take the whole automation processes in our lives to another level, to influence our industrial environment as to how we produce goods. The question now is, what is the next big thing? Like I said, the pictures of that puzzles have already been crafted, some of them, and we are experiencing them. What is more there to come? Well, let me show you what are the enablers of this industry 4.0. And I will highlight a few of them. There is a basic concept around Industry 4.0, and that is to build cyber physical systems. What does that actually mean? Essentially, it means not only to have systems that are automated, but those systems won't be communicating through physical wires. Those systems will be communicating through internet. Those systems will be using Wi-Fi, because the backbone of the cyber physical systems is two things. That is the communication, which can be done wirelessly, and that is also the data exchange of the communication and the computation around that. So as cables will no longer be used, it means routinely so from your home, you can monitor and process goods and your things at the comfort of your own home. I will zoom in a few things around what this actually entails. If you look at the uh, automation, robotics, it's not a new thing. Like I said, the pictures of the puzzles, some of them are already there. Already from the 1960s, General Motors started to using automation in terms of welding. And if you look back, also you have the Internet of Things. Internet of Things, it's something that existed, but the term Internet of Things started to be formulated and finalized and used mostly often since 1999. That is part of the depot. Then we look at what autonomous systems, cyber systems. USA, of which that is their National Science Foundation, have already started funding efforts in terms of research into these cyber systems. And they continue to do so up to today. But one of the most creative things and the thing that is going to hit us by storm and that will throw away completely what Industry 2.0 has done in terms of mass production is that the realities of today is that 
We all like to be distinct. We all like to be unique. And mass production means being the same. And this is where adaptive manufacturing is going to become such a powerful thing, where you can have tailor-made and customized designs. Because now, adaptive manufacturing does not mean that you need to realign re your factories. It means 3D printing will be able, in the accuracy of about micrometers, to craft whatever model that you have or in, your major, in your imagination you may be wishing for. Does that really feel like a visual reality? Does that really feel like Jijun? <coughs> what I would like you to do as you move out today is whenever you <coughs> see something that says virtual reality, I would like you to replace the word of virtual. Because it won't be virtual anymore. <laughs> it will be eventual reality. For example, <coughs> we will be having smart factories, inevitable. Smart homes. Your fridge at home will be telling you what is your diet for the day, what you should be eating. Next time a robot will be walking you into a room, but they will be telling that that's why you're going to remove your wisdom teeth. And you walk inside there and say, okay, who's going to help me? Then the voice tells you, Mr. Mabusa, please undress yourself. And we'll sit there. We'll be resuming the operations in the next two minutes. And that's 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 scary. That is where we are going. There are other challenges as well. As artificial intelligence keep on growing, as the robots will be learning at their own pace and developing their own sense of human nature. When we get to the situation where we party with them. Can we really resonate with these images? I would like you, as you go home, to have some of those deep conversations as you ask yourself one question, and that is, am I ready for the reality of industry for poison? Mr. Thomas Master.